Hey guys and welcome back to the last video of this little backup series. Today we'll talk about Amanda. I use this backup system quite often if I just want to restore one single file to my open hubby end. So for example if you messed up one file in your configuration it's easy with Amanda to just restore one single file. Of course you can backup and restore the whole open hubby end system as well but I think Amanda is quite useful if you just want to restore specific files. So as always, it's a good idea to go to openhub.org and read through the documentation. You will find the documentation called how to backup your OpenHubian server using Amanda. The link is in the video description. If you walk through the documentation, you will find the installation guide down here. So the first thing you gotta do is to prepare your storage. In my case, I wanna use my NAS server. So I installed two NAS and I wanna use this one. So if I go to storage, pools, you will find my backup system here called Smart Home Backup. And if I go to sharing and Unix shares NFS, you will find the mount point, mount Smart Home Backup. You have to use NFS. Um, Windows shares, unfortunately, is not reliable here on the Amanda backup system. So make sure you set up your storage as NFS. So if you go back to the documentation, you can read this as well here that you have to use NFS. So the next thing you want to do is to mount your NAS storage on your Raspberry Pi. To do this, open your terminal and then change to root with uh, sudo bash next thing you gotta do is to find out your ip address of your nas server in my case it's called true nas so here is my ip address then we gotta create two folders on the raspberry pi i call this two folders, storage and server as in the documentation. To do this, just type in mkdir dash p and then your preferred name of the um, folders. Then we gotta link our NAS system to our etc fstep file. To do this, just copy this line here. And then of course you gotta change the IP address and the name of your um, storage pool. So in my case, I gotta go to the IP address and then change this one to 2.9. And my storage here is on mount smart home backup. So we gotta done check this one. MNT Smart Home Backup. That's okay. I wanna mount this here on my storage server. So that's fine. And we can click enter. To double check if the link is in the etc fstep file, just type in sudo nano etc uh, fstep. And then you can see that I got two entries here. So I got to delete one. Normally you should just have one entry, but in my case, I did this two times. So I got two entries here. So I got to delete one. And save this file. So in the next step, we want to mount the storage here on the Raspberry Pi. Okay, now it's mounted. Now we can check this with dfk um, storage server. And here you can see that the file system is linked and already mounted. So you can see that everything is working. We got our mounting point here on storage server and our file system is perfectly mounted with a usage of 1%. So of course you can mount a USB storage as well, but I think it's a good idea to do this on a NAS if you got a NAS. 
So for the next step, we gotta install the Amanda backup system on our Raspberry Pi. That's quite easy because it's already built in OpenHubian. So go back to your terminal and then open the OpenHubian config. And then skip the update and then go down to the point 50 backup and restore and click on 52 Amanda system backup. So here we ask if you wanna install the Amanda backup solution. Yes, so click on continue. Then you gotta choose a password for your backup. Type this password in again. So now the Amanda backup system will be installed. It takes a little while. And now we are prompt to the mail transfer agent installation. So we click on begin. Then you can choose no configuration at this time if you don't wanna set up your mail server. So pick this one. Then we get the information that we are leaving the mail system configuration. Yes. And now we are asked if we want to split our files into smaller files or if we want to use the unsplit configuration. So I use the unsplit configuration as default. Um, you should choose the no option here. And then you can still set up the mail server. So just leave this one empty and click on OK. I leave this one as default as well. So I click on OK. So basically I go through the mail server configuration just with uh, empty lines here and just always click on OK if you don't want to set up your mail um, configuration. As I don't need it, so I leave this uh, lines all empty. And here on the reporting address, I leave this one as default as well, root at openhubian, click on OK. And then um, we are asked if we want to backup using locally attached storage, like a NAS system or a USB drive. Here you got to click on yes. And on the next step, you got to type in your mount point of your storage system. As you remember, we set up our mount point here on storage server. So I just type in storage server and click on OK. So now we get our information that the Amanda storage setup failed. It's not really failed yet, but there is a problem where you have to uh, type in no root squash on your NAS server. Here on true NAS, it's not really possible to um, type in the term no root squash. So I'm stuck with this option here, but don't worry, OpenHubian will make the file writable so it's not really a problem here. Just click on OK. And then you got to choose how much storage do you want to dedicate to your backup in megabytes. In my case, I got a 16 gigabyte uh, SD card in my uh, Raspberry Pi. So I type in 50,000. It's recommended to uh, choose between two and three times the amount of data to be backed up. So as I said, in my case, my Raspberry Pi runs on a 60 gigabyte SD card. So 50,000 would be like three times, but it always depends how much space you got on your NAS storage. So I click on OK. And now we are asked if we want to create a raw disk backup of your SD card. Uh, in my case, I click on no because we already set up the SD mirroring here. But if you just want to use the Amanda backup system, maybe you want to get a backup of your whole SD card. So I click on no. Now we get an information that the Amanda backup system will create 15 virtual containers. So we click on continue. And everything is set now. It takes a little while to create this 15 uh, virtual containers. And now we already get the prompt that uh, the setup was successful. So we'll click on OK. Now we are asked if we want to backup our system to Amazon AWS. I click on no. And now we are up and running. Click on exit. The next thing you got to do is to um, make your first backup. 
So if you go down on the documentation, you will find the part backup here. So the first thing we gotta do is to change to the user backup. So make this a little smaller and clear the screen. So I just type in sudo su um, dash backup. Now I'm the user backup and I can check if my NAS system is connected. I do this with am check open hub there. So you can see that my host is checked in in 3.681 seconds and there are zero problems found. So we can continue and create our first backup. To do this, just scroll down in the documentation and you will find this part here am dump open up there so just open my terminal again and then type in am dump open up there and now amanda has already made our backup to check this just type in am report open up there so and here you can see all the report of amanda um, how long it took and what happened and basically we are already set and we got our backup on our NAS storage. If you got any problems or questions about the backup method just type it in the comment section and I try to answer all your questions. So for the next part we want to restore a specific file, probably the most uh, important part here on the Amanda backup system. So in the documentation, just go down to restore and find this part restore a file here. So I open a new terminal. As you can see, now I'm user OpenHubian again, my standard user. So just to remember, if you wanna create a backup, you have to be user backup. But if you wanna restore a backup or you wanna restore a file, you gotta be the user root. So I just type in sudo bash So as you can see now I'm a uh, root So the next part will be to create a different location on my mounting point As you all remember we created our mounting point uh, storage slash server So now I create a new folder called storage slash server temp because I want to restore my files into this temp folder. To do this, I just type in mkdir storage server and temp. And now I got a new folder. So for the next part, I will go into my am recover console. So I type in am recover open hub dir. And now, as you can see, we are inside the Amanda console. Now we gotta figure out which disks are backed up. So I type in list disk. As you can see, we got boot, etc, and wildlib open hub. So I gotta set a disk. So in my case, I wanna restore a file inside the etc open hub HTML folder. So you're probably familiar with this folder because, for example, if you want to uh, show some icons or show some pictures on your OpenHubian system or on your OpenHub system, it's stored in this folder. So I just type in set disk etc. And then if you type in ls, you will find all the folders and uh, files here inside the etc folder. So uh, just click on enter to go down. And as I said, I wanna jump into the folder OpenHub and then jump into the folder HTML. So I just type in CD OpenHub. As you can see, now I'm in the folder etc OpenHub, then CD HTML. Now I'm in this folder and if I type LS, you can see all the files located here in uh, this folder. So just for example, I want to restore the file readme.txt. To do this, we got to add this file, type in add readme.txt. So we added this file 
And then if you scroll down a little bit, you see that next part would be here, this one, LCD server 10. But that's not correct in our case. So before we created a new folder inside storage server called temp, that's why I put in LCD storage server temp, click on enter and then type in pvd and then type in lpvd so to check we are um, inside the folder etc open hub html and we want to restore this one inside the folder storage server temp and for the next and last part we just type in extract and then you gotta choose yes now we gotta type in yes again and now the file is restored in our mounting folder. Just to double check, I will open my CyberDuck here, my uh, FTP browser. And then if I go to storage, server, you will find this folder temp here. And inside this folder, we created OpenHub and HTML and our um, file. We wanted to restore the readme.txt file. So now you can just copy it and paste it back again in your normal etc open hub html so basically you restore the file from the backup system into your mounting point and now you can change files again so now amanda is perfectly set up you did your first backup and you restored your first file so i hope i did a good job if you like this video please give me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and take care. I will see you till the next one. Bye bye.